It is now time for questions to the Minister for Education. Question number 12 has been withdrawn, and I call uh, Mr. Leslie Cree. Question one, Deputy Speaker. The Department of Education does not employ staff in schools. I am aware that the Education Authority has developed guidance regarding selection and recruitment of both teaching and non-teaching staff in controlled schools, and for teaching staff in Catholic maintained schools. Or for, sorry, for non-teaching staff in Catholic maintained schools. The purpose of this guidance is to ensure compliance with the legislative framework regarding fair employment. Similarly, CCMS has a recruitment and selection scheme in place for operation in Catholic maintained schools for teaching staff. I welcome the approach that the employment authorities are taking to ensure compliance and consistency in fair employment. In voluntary grammar, grant maintained integrated and Irish medium schools where there are employers where they are employers in their own right, each Board of Governors is responsible for implementing and adhering to the legislative framework in fair employment. I call Leslie Cree for supplementary. I thank the Minister for that. Uh short response. He does know, in fact, that this matter has been going on for some time. In fact, on the 25th of May this year, Minister, you'll remember you told me, in fact, that uh, I have not written to FM, DFM on this matter, although you had already agreed that, in fact, it was, and I agree with you there, the fair employment issue is for OFM, DFM. But you told my colleague, uh, Mrs. Overend, here beside me in April, that you had written uh, to OFM, DFM on the matter. So, the could you please this clarify: Are you for it or against it? Um, it's like Groundhog Day. Every question time now since April, and, and this era by me is, is haunting me at every question time. The member knows fine well my position because, following on from that question time, I made sure that every member of the assembly was provided with clarification around the era I made in my initial response. So, the member is fully aware. Uh, of my position on this issue, and I have no doubt that the rest of the House is fully aware of it as well. I call Maeve McLaughlin. Uh, and thank the Minister for the detail in his answer. But can I ask specifically what role the Minister does have in ensuring that schools um, adhere to employment legislation? Well, as, as I have pointed out in my, in my answer to Mr. Cree, there we have the em various employing authorities. Uh, in relation to schools, whether it be the Education Authority, CCMS, or the voluntary grammars, or, or uh, voluntary maintained schools, or the Irish medium sector, etc., etc. So I have an accountability mechanism in the sense that I am accountable to this Assembly on behalf of the education system, on behalf of the education budget, and certainly I take that role very seriously. But in legislative sense, uh, fair employment and, and legislation is the responsibility of OFM DFM, but in terms of monitoring, the accountability mechanisms within our education system, I answer to the Assembly as to the Education Committee and to others. But legislatively, uh, a firm employment falls under OFM DFM. I call Sean Rogers. Response thus far. What steps are being taken, Minister, by the Department to ensure that, uh, that all students and, uh, and all teachers out there have greater access to a certificate for religious education? There have been steps taken over this last number of years to ensure that students uh, have access to the certificate. We have access courses through St Mary's and we have also distance learning uh, through the University in Glasgow. Uh, and there's also measures being taken in relation to Strandmillis as well. So we, we are trying to make and ensure that the religious certificate is accessible to all teachers uh, regardless of their background. I call Jim Allister. It would not be better, Minister, to go a further step beyond accessibility and ensure that the certificate of Catholic religious education was removed as applicable to non-religious subjects. You know, there isn't Catholic mathematics or Catholic geography. Why do we need a Catholic certificate of education to teach those subjects? Well, again, these specific matters in terms of it is not in breach, I understand, and I've been advised on several occasions it is not a breach of equality or fair employment legislation. If the member wishes to raise those issues of concern with OFM DFM, then he's perfectly entitled to do so. I call Bromham McGann. I got question two. Uh, I was delighted to announce a number of major works capital build projects in the Fermanagh and South Tyrone constituency. The new build projects ran a scale model and an approved cost of six million requires an addendum to the business case due to design issues. St Patrick's Academy Dungannon 
with an approved business case of £28.7 million, is anticipated to go on site this financial year. The Devonish College project has an approved, an approved business case of £23.2 million, and the design team appointment is currently underway. The Batora Royal Collegiate business case is currently being prepared, and the business case for Eden Dork Primary School is anticipated to be approved in this financial year. There are also a number of school enhancement projects, uh, SEPs in the constituency, valued at a total of over £14 million. These include schemes for Earn Integrated College and Willowbridge Special School in Enniskill that are on site and are progressing well. A second project for Earn Integrated College is shovel ready but is held due to budget constraints. Projects for Mount Lourdes Grammar and St Michael's College in Enniskill are currently at design stage. These major works and SEB projects represent a significant investment in this constituency, not only in economic terms but also for the benefit of the children and the community in the area. All projects that are not contractually committed will be subject to funding being available. The Moy Shared Education Campus for St John's Primary School, Moy and Moy Regional Primary School, is at a business case stage ready. If approved, the project will be released to construction procurement, subject to funding being available. And I thank the Minister for his response, and it most definitely is a good news story for Fermanagh South Tyrone. Can I ask the Minister how many school enhancement programmes has the Minister been able to release for construction so far? Uh, school enhancement projects, uh, I released in, in October 2013, I announced school enhancement programmes. The latest position on SEPs is 40 projects have now had their final design approved, 34 have been released to construction, 6 are held due to budget constraints. Now, over this last number of months, I have been able to release more projects. We have 22 are on site, with a further 6 expected to go on site by the end of the year. And as I said, at the start of September, I released a further 6 projects uh, to move towards construction stage due to slippages and other uh, capital projects. And if I am able to secure funding either from internally within the department for cap from capital or externally, then I will move forward the other SEP projects as well. I call Neil Somerville. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, the Minister may have already touched on this, but does he not find it ridiculous that the shared education project, uh, like the one in the Moy, have been put on hold because of issues which has nothing to do with shared education? Uh, does the Minister know when this would possibly be sorted out? Well, I, I suspect the member is referring to levels of progression, and, and he's correct in one sense, levels of progression. We're not measuring shared education through levels of progression. We're measuring educational attainment through levels of progression across our, uh, our shared education funding initiatives, and they're voluntary. It's up to schools whether they apply to the scheme or not. There's £25 million of funds available, both from the department, OFM, DFM, and uh, Atlantic philanthropies, and I think it's only right and proper that we measure educational attainment of our young people through these schemes as we would in any other scheme. And at the, at the very centre of levels of progression is the professional judgment of the teacher. That's at the very centre of it, where we are relying on and supporting the professional judgment of the teacher to set the progression levels of their pupils. And how will we moderate that? We will moderate it through bringing together teachers in a cluster and asking them to moderate the scores that have been given in, the, in, in a number of schools around their area, which will allow the teachers themselves over a period of time to reach a professional judgment as to where a 1, 2, 3 or 4, 5 should be graded in the system. So I think that's, that's right and proper. Again, in terms, I know there's concerns around a range of areas from this around the trade unions. I am prepared to look at the workload. I am prepared to look at as to when how and for what purposes reporting mechanisms are reported back to my department or SIA. So I think the outstanding issues can be resolved, and indeed I am meeting the unions immediately after question time to discuss levels of progression again on how we resolve the issues. So I think with a fair wind and open mind we will be able to resolve the issues around levels of progression, and all those schools out there who wish to partake in shared education projects will therefore be able to do so. I call Sandra Overend. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker. And just on that point, does the Minister recognise the inequality in this decision? Uh, by forcing those schools who want to carry out a shared education project, that they must uh, provide those uh, statistics and those uh, to, to, uh, to, to provide those statistics compared to all the other schools 
who are not forced to, to do them? Uh, there are many inequalities in our education system, and again highlighted by the Equality Commission's report this morning. And how we work out those inequalities to ensure that every young person has an equal opportunity in education. But I don't recognise inequalities in ensuring that a school who wishes to enter a shared education project, and it's not being forced, statutory levels of progression, statutory assessment. The, the Education Committee and this Assembly have passed regulations, which means that I, as Minister, have to use statutory assessment. I have no choice in this matter. Statutory assessment is exactly what it says on the tin, statutory assessment. And it's not only shared education projects that are required to re return levels of progression. All schools under the law are required to return levels of progression. Now, we are in, there is a union dispute over this. I believe, as I said to your colleague, that with an open mind from both sides, we can resolve this issue and resolve it quite quickly. Moving on, I call Dominic Bradley. Special education needs provision is matched to the individual needs of the child regardless of school sector. The process is child centred to ensure that children from all sectors, including Irish medium, have access to an appropriate education that supports them to achieve their personal potential in terms of age and ability, aptitude and any special educational needs they may have. My department has provided additional funding of 525,000 to enable the Education Authority to deliver work on strengthening special educational needs, identification, assessment and provision in Irish medium schools, including capacity building projects, sharing best practice and the provision of SEAN supported tailored to Irish medium settings. The EA, sorry, the EA worked with the Irish medium regional Sanko steering group in the planning and delivery of these support packages. Importantly, there is evidence from schools inspections that these interventions have led to notable improvements in SEAN provision in the Irish medium sector, including, including an increased awareness around SEAN issues, enhanced knowledge among practitioners, and Sanko's un uh, improved outcomes for pupils. As part of the review of SEAN and inclusion, further capacity work has been funded and undertaken to support SEAN in the Irish medium sector, including Irish medium education early years, SEAN conference, the provision of SEAN resource files, an early years handbook tailored for the Irish medium sector, which was developed again by the Irish medium practitioners, with input and advice from the Education and Training Inspector. Both the Education Authority and my department remain committed to working with the Irish medium sector to ensure a standard of special education provision that enables every young person to fulfil their potential at every stage of their development. Call Dominic Bradley. For me, my August last year, Colio Gascombe, we have seen a lot of act a regra. Actually, in case the boy lumps a career, a lot. Could you remember as future like she knew Kinchita, that me Albert Hart August Tishkins, Erin Gillig, egne special tori sha more hample egne sekoli he idachasula. Um, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and I thank the Minister for his answer. And could I ask the Minister how he can help ensure uh, that these specialists, like educational psychologists, have a good understanding of the Irish language, which will enable them to carry out the work within the, the Irish medium sector with a much greater degree of competency? Um, well, I think the member will agree. I, I've read out quite a comprehensive list of interventions and support which has been provided to the Irish medium sector over this last number of years, and it is beginning to pay dividends. But there's still work to do. There's still uh, objectives to be achieved, and we are we are building uh, a sector and the support mechanisms around that, and the provision of specialists with proficient Irish uh, language in that is, is a goal which we have to achieve. But this will be, this will be uh, achieved over a number of years. I think at this stage we have achieved a lot. But I accept the member, members' comments. We still have a lot of work to do, uh, particularly in terms of professionals working in the sector who are proficient in the Irish language to engage with both pupils, parents, and teachers. I call Rosie McCorley. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and I thank the Minister for his answers. 
thus far, because an an deglom era and era, and may salahar gila because karha karha sinaru sinav rechnu rachna or onage taki akt volama ata or iter lav eganuders edukish. Can I ask the Minister, will Irish Median provision be taken into consideration in the current review of learning support centres, which is currently being carried out by the Education Authority? Can I remind members they should not be reading their questions? Minister. Go on, Boykas. Yes, is, is a simple answer to that. Uh, any element of our education system under review or development uh, or in being delivered has to take into account our, our duties around Irish medium and the integrated sector, so yes, th th that provision will be taken into account. Moving on, I call Michael McGimsey. Mr. Speaker, question number four. The Education Authority is responsible for ensuring that there is adequate pre-school provision available to meet the programme for government commitment. For September 2015 admissions, additional places were allocated to existing providers and four new non-statutory providers were brought into the preschool education programme to meet demand within the BT9, BT10 and BT12 areas of South Belfast. An additional 36 places were approved under temporary flexibility arrangements for eight statutory nursery settings within the constituency. At the end of stage two of the admissions process, 11 children whose parents engaged with the process from the beginning were on place in South Belfast. The EA has advised me that additional places allocated for September 2015 were sufficient to meet the demand for unplaced children in South Belfast, should parents have wished to avail of them. There are still unfilled places in BT8, BT9, BT10 and BT12 areas. The EA has advised that it anticipates demand for places in South Belfast to decrease in 2016, but they will keep this under review. I will continue to support the EA to ensure sufficient Sufficient preschool places are available across all areas for September 2016 admissions. I call Michael uh, Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Uh, and I refer to the Minister's uh, answer. Uh, and the fact was that there was a major uh, issue about places, and the BELB certainly stepped forward to solve that. But they did that by the provision of part time places. Will the Minister agree with me that it is better to have full places rather than part time cases that children are suffering? And I think we'll only have to look at the latest uh, uh, report that's out uh, uh, this week, published about the plight of Protestant working class boys' education on their achievement and also the ethnic minorities. Well, I don't think it's accurate to say children are suffering because they may have a part time placement instead of a full time placement. The last piece of research upon which the Department makes its decisions on shows that there is little, if any, difference in terms of child development between full-time and part-time placement for a child uh, at the relevant age. So, I think in the ideal world, yes, I would like to provide every child with full-time, uh, because I think in terms of the socio-economic benefits to wider society and to the child can be measured. But in the current budgetary climate, it's going to simply be impossible to provide not only the places but the infrastructure to ensure that you have full-time provision in every setting, because many settings actually run two settings in the one day, both, both part-time. So I, I, I am satisfied that the preschool education programme is meeting and at times exceeding uh, its, its uh, potential. And I believe that in terms of South Belfast, we have well met our programme for government targets. I call Martin O'Millier. We have said, I'll ask John Corlea, could I ask the Minister, and I know over the summer uh, education officials worked with myself, with Representative McGimsey and others, around this issue of preschool places, but could I ask the Minister, at the end of the process, how many preschool places were left unfilled in South Belfast? Uh, my understanding of the current situation in South Belfast is that there are 54 unfilled places in South Belfast. That's places that remain vacant and could be filled uh, if the demand was there. Moving on, I call Fergal McKinney. Deputy Speaker, question number five. To change GCS grading to a nine to one grading system applies to qualifications developed in England. The education is a devolved matter and it's for me to decide whether there is merit in C adopting a nine to one grading system here or whether they should retain the existing system. My department has held a consultation on this issue. In reaching my decision, I will take into account the responses received from a range of stakeholders, 
including young people, parents, teachers, schools and principals, universities and trade unions. My decision will be based on what I consider to be in the best interest of our young people. It is of course important that my decision that any decision taken ensures that qualifications offered here are relevant and appropriate for our young people and our economy. It is also vital that qualifications offered here continue to be recognised by universities and employers across the island and beyond. Uh, that is why I will seek to ensure that our qualifications retain the currency and portability which they have long enjoyed. I call Fergal McKinney. Uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Uh, uh, ministers, there is no direct equivalence between the A-star grade and the, uh, at GCSE and the grade 10 in the English model. How will the Department ensure that children from here applying, for example, high demand courses like veterinary uh, in, uh, in England will not be penalised? Well, uh, the, the, you could argue there is no direct equivalent between the Scottish qualifications and the grade 9 or the grade 1 qualification in England, or you could argue that the Welsh, who are going down the road of retaining uh, A to A star, grade, or A through C, D, etc., that they have overcome this obstacle. You could argue that there is no direct equivalence between exams set in Singapore or exams set in Germany or Austria. But you know what? Universities manage their way through this. Employers manage to do their way through all of these things. So I don't think we should become fixated on the issue that it is beyond the realms of possibility to provide equivalence between the current range of marks we use here and those changes that have been devised in England. And remember, it is a devolved issue. The, the, the then Secretary of State, Michael Gove, and his, his, his successor, have made decisions around what they believe best for their education system. I will make decisions which I believe are best for our education system and ensuring that there is continued portability around our exams. But we should not allow either any devolved institution, including Westminster, to set our education policy, and we most certainly should not allow uh, the examinations bodies, many of whom are private consortiums, to set our, ex our education policy either. Call Sandra Overend. Mr. Deputy Speaker, um, can the Minister inform the House of the true extent of the consultation uh, on this issue and if it was, the response was reflective of the Northern Ireland population and primarily um, did he seek uh, responses from the higher and further education sector and from businesses who are, will actually be using uh, these grades and these as assessing uh, their ability to get into university for their education and employability skills and will the Minister um, undertake to remedy this situation? Well, it appears you have answered your own question because you believe the consultation was not correct. No, you have not provided, provided me with any evidence uh, in, in your question. Order. You have not provided me with any evidence in your question or statement as to why the consultation was flawed. I do not believe the consultation was flawed. The consultation was open to the public, regardless of whom or what sector you come from to respond to. And the responses have been quite healthy. They have been informed, and I believe uh, have shown that there has been significant interest in this issue. It shows the challenges there are around making a decision around this matter, but thankfully it also shows the huge interest that remains out there in our education system. Moving on, I call Jerry Kelly. Uh, question six, please. I have committed almost £1 million to the SEP project at St Bernard's Primary School. This will provide additional accommodation to include five new classrooms as well as refurbishment of existing buildings. This investment reflects a significant accommodation shortfall at St Bernard's Primary School and the limitations of the existing school layout. It is expected that the works contractor will be on site in early 2016 with an anticipated construction programme of 12 months. I am therefore hopeful that the school will be enjoying the benefits of the extension and refurbishment by Christmas 2016 or early 2017. I call Jerry Kelly. Uh, thank the Minister for his uh, answer up to now and, and thank him also for the investment into uh, St Bernard's. Uh, it, it is a reflection on uh, because some of the money has been used for five new classrooms and indeed uh, to uh, renovate and remodel uh, seven other existing rooms that shows uh, that there is a growing population 
Uh, in the area, there's <laughs> growing population in the area, I'm going to it. <laughs> Could the uh, Minister give us details of other recent um, minor works which uh, were completed then? Go on, Boyka Session, Valor and Kyrgyz, and thank the member for his question and his comments. Uh, just in, in general, the, the school enhancement programme has been a significant uh, step forward in terms of how we invest in our schools. For, for a relatively small amount in terms of capital, for, around a million pounds in this case, we are transforming this thing. During the past, the only choices you may have been was a complete rebuild. But now here we are, a million pounds reinvesting in this school and ensuring that it is future proofed. Uh, for future generations of young people in that area. We have also uh, grant a significant amount of money in terms of minor works at this facility as well. Uh, around £350,000 has been uh, spent under minor works for disability adoption at this premises and also in relation to some outdoor play areas and traffic management, etc. It has all been in the mix over this last number of years. So St Bernard's has received uh, quite a significant amount of investment over this of this last number of years, uh, and I wish it well for the future. Moving on, I call Michaela Boyle. Ms. Chair, short question seven. The education curriculum minimum content order 2007 provides opportunities to address anti-sectarianism in both primary and post-primary schools. This is largely through personal development and mutual understanding at primary level and local and global citizenship at post-primary levels, but opportunities are provided to other subjects at post-primary through developing pupils as contributors to society. It is for schools to determine what programmes and resources best meet the practical needs of their pupils, make community relations equality and diversity policy, underpins and supports the curriculum requirement by educating young people to develop self-respect and respect for others, promoting equality and to work to eliminate discrimination. My shared education policy will also provide opportunities for people to learn about each other from each other and contribute to learning on anti sectarianism. I call Michaela Boyne. Garmagat, can I thank the Minister for his response? Minister, I was re recently decent, uh, deeply disappointed in relation to a matter in my own constituency area where a number of young people getting on a school bus in Donamana were victims of sectarian abuse. And indeed, those young individuals are frightened to go to school every day as a result of this. This has been reported to the local authorities, uh, Minister. And I would ask if you would join with me in condemning this sectarianism and indeed communicate with the local authority um, in addressing uh, this issue and making sure that it is resolved urgently. Gor uh, I have no hesitation in condemning it. Sectarianism from any quarter is absolutely wrong, and sectarianism directed against young people uh, is abhorrent. And I have no difficulty in engaging with the, the education authority to see what measures they are taking to ensure the safety of all children in that, in that uh, community. I call John Dallet. Uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker, I thank the Minister for his answer. Uh, could the Minister tell the House how he intends to make sure that shared education in the future becomes curriculum based uh, so that we, in fact, uh, don't have to continually be apologising for introducing shared education, but can uh, point to the fact that children are learning together and not simply uh, in some minor activities together. Well, I've said it often before, the shared education policy developed by my department and uh, the legislation that we're going to be bringing before the House is catch-up time. And we're catching up with many, many schools out there who have been involved in shared education over many years and are deeply uh, devoted to the principle of shared education. In regards to being embedded in the curriculum, well, this goes back to one of the first questions I was asked. This is about young people learning the curriculum together and how we measure educational attainment and success uh, out of that curriculum. So we're on a journey. There have been many twists and turns in that journey, but I think things are improving, particularly in education. People are reaching out to each other. And it's not a case of where we have to make everybody the same, or we should uh, work towards a system where everybody is the same. It's okay, but I think what we need to do is ensure that everybody can be different and that we respect difference. And through the Shared Education Programme, I want to see our young people learning about each other, from each other. And that takes in all the issues about young people's lives where they can debate, discuss, learn, analyse, research all the aspects of the diverse community we all now live in. 
That is the end of the period for listed questions, and we now move on to topical questions. And I call Ms. Anna Lou. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Deputy Speaker. Uh, today, the Equality Commission published its draft statement on key inequalities in education in Northern Ireland, which highlighted that minority ethnic pupils are more likely to leave school with no GCSEs than white school leavers and are over twice as likely to enter unemployment after leaving school. Can I ask the Minister what does he believe are the barriers for BME children in schools and what actions is he taking to redress such inequalities? I, I think the, the, the barriers facing our ethnic minorities are multifaceted and are as much to do in terms of learning and interacting with our education system and ensuring that, and this is a challenge for the department as much as anything, that we are ensuring that, that newcomers to our society are aware of the support, the benefits and the mechanisms within our education system which are there to ensure that their young people have every opportunity in life. I think also in terms of, of cultural differences, I and mean, even when you look at the report, there are difference, different levels of attainment in different ethnic minorities. There's different experiences from different ethnic groups in our education system, and we have to learn from that as well. Uh, social deprivation and social isolation also plays a role in this, and that's, that's something for wider society, to ensure that everyone in our society feels safe, that everyone in our society feels valued, and is uh, allowed to integrate into society. So huge challenges ahead, but it is something I'm conscious of, and I welcome the fact that the member has asked the question, because it does broaden out the debate around, we, we have a very narrow debate around the Equality Commission report, so I think there's, there's other things in there we need to have a very close look at as well. I call Anna Lou. Thank you. I thank the Minister's uh, uh, response. Another fact in the uh, statement really, in many ways, shocked me and disappointed me. Um, it talks about uh, bullying school there is a lot of school uh, bull, uh, racist bullying in schools and it says generally a barrier to addressing bullying in schools is that schools tend to lack knowledge of how to effectively con confront the issue of racist bullying and may in some cases have difficulty acknowledging that Would a the problem come to a exists question, please? yes thank you i just want to refer to that paragraph to remind the minister I am really disappointed. Well, ethnic minority communities have been here for a long time now, since the 60s. Can we have a question, please? Yes. And what is the department doing in those years to address bullying? Well, I, I too uh, read the commentary around how, in the opinion of the Equality Commission, schools deal with bullying, particularly in terms of racism. But I'm not sure what research is behind that, that assertion by the Equality Commission. And I will engage with the Equality Commission around the entire report uh, in the time ahead, because I think it may be somewhat of a broad sweeping statement to suggest that our schools are not equipped. There may be individual cases, and if it is worse than individual cases, then certainly it is something we have to pay attention to. But only this week I have forwarded to the executive legislation around bullying, to strengthen our bullying policies in our schools, to strengthen the role of boards of governors in tackling bullying in our schools and to give more guidance and advice to our schools around tackling bullying. And one of the areas which I have identified is racist bullying, LGBT bullying and other Section 75s bullying, uh, which has to be dealt with and eradicated not only in our schools but outside our schools as well. I call Phil Flanagan. For your last control, can I ask the Minister how his department intends to mark the uh, forthcoming centenary of the 1916 Easter Rising throughout schools? Um, thank you, Madam First Question. We are working in conjunction uh, with the Executive. The Executive made the decision that the then Daddy Minister, uh, the Daddy Minister and the Decal Minister would bring forward a programme of events around the centenaries of the major events which occurred uh, on this island uh, from 1910. 1915 onwards, 1916, including the Easter Rising. I'm working with the Department of Education and Skills in the South and involving ourselves in a joint project around the centenaries of the Somme and the 1916 Rising 
uh, in regards to school competition, where schools can enter that through either through written work or through art uh, or through drama. For a for I thank the, the Minister for his answer. Can he outline what consideration um, his department has given uh, to the, the notion of um, a joint um, initiatives to mark uh, both the Easter Rising of 1916 and the Battle of the Somme, given that uh, regardless of what uh, political perspective you come from, uh, people across this island have uh, largely an affinity with uh, either one of those two uh, significant events? Um, I am considering how we, even and we have discussions through question time around the shared education initiatives we are running through our schools. And here is a, a great opportunity for schools from different traditions, different backgrounds, to learn about significant events in each other's history. Uh, and they will find that it is a shared history. Uh, and I think, in terms of, I think there's an opportunity in around the shared education programmes for schools to be working together, and I want to explore that further. Uh, to see if we can provide support or resources to schools to do just that. I call Sandra Overend. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Can I ask the Minister um, if, to detail if there are any or comp if there are compulsory hours for pupils with special educational needs? I don't have the full details in front of me, but our, 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 our legislation and guidance does set down uh, for various parts of the curriculum how long. Um, Pupils should be, uh, should be in formal education. I can provide the member with the full details of it. I call Sandra Overham for a supplementary. Uh, thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. I am aware that, uh, from an answer to a written question, that daily compulsory hours for years one to four um, is three hours, uh, and for older pupils it's four and a half hours per day. However, I am aware that special educational needs pupils are effectively being sent home when their one-to-one -one, uh, tuition or support finishes for the day. Is the Minister aware of this inequality and is he willing to do something about that? Well, if the member wishes to make me aware of the circumstances and instances where children are being sent home after an hour and a half, I'd be very interested in it. I can assure I can, uh, with, uh, the member provides me with that information, I will follow it up. Uh, I am aware I have answered a question to the member just quite recently in terms of curriculum hours, etc. Uh, and I am more than happy to ensure that any inquiries she comes to me about this are quickly and speedily followed up. Uh, the members asking topical questions number four and six have asked that their name be withdrawn. Uh, Mr. John McAllister at question five is not in his place. We move on to uh, I call Patsy McLone. Yeah, good colleagues. Moi Hislation Irish and Fraggy Gajisha. Um <clears throat> could I ask the Minister for an update on the new build for Holy Trinity uh, Secondary School, Cookstown? Uh, and uh, the, the business case is proceeding for for the new build for Holy Trinity Cookstown and uh, all things are, are moving forward as should be and as planned in, in, the, in the timetable provided. I call Patsy McLone. On, on that very point, the timetable provided, when does he anticipate build work uh, commencing on site? It is difficult during topical questions to know the specifics of every item of business around education. I am more than happy to provide the member with the information uh, in regards to this, but I am not aware of, of any slippage in, re, in regards to Holy Trinity. It is quite a significant investment. We have been through the difficult parts of the development proposal, ensuring the numbers around the school, its area plan proofed, uh, etc., etc. But I will forward the member on more information. Uh, Chris Little is not in his place. And I call Bronya McGann. Can I ask the Minister, could he give an update on the current situation regarding the minor work schemes in my constituency of South Tyrone? Um, there is considerable pressure across the sector in terms of minor work schemes. Um, I am currently examining as to how we can alleviate that pressure around minor works. Uh, it's, this is a direct result of a reduction in our capital budget, and education has reduced this year around 20 per cent. Um, so I'm trying to see if we can alleviate the pressure around minor works to see if we can get more, many of the, or some of the urgent uh, projects off the ground in your constituency and others. I called Bronwyn McGann for supplementary. 
Speaker, Miogad and, and Minister, you've touched on my supplementary because I have been hearing concerns about a maintenance backlog in schools and maybe you could give more information on what you intend to do to relieve that backlog. Thank you. Okay. Well, the, the maintenance pressure is covered through the revenue budget rather than the capital budget and I have been able to uh, identify some flexibility in the revenue budget which will allow me to invest a further £9 million pounds to maintenance, so that will bring the total maintenance budget for this year uh, up to £23 million, pounds, and I, I hope that will alleviate some, if not a significant part of the pressure on our maintenance budget, and uh, whether an October monitoring round goes ahead or not, I would like to be in a position in January to make a further bid for funds to uh, the maintenance programme as well. I call Ross Hussey. Thank you, uh, Mr Deputy Speaker. Uh, the Minister, I'm sure, will be aware I was going to ask him a question in relation to the Listenelli campus, so I'm going to ask him a further question in relation to that, the, the question that's on the other paper will stay there. But will the Minister advise what thought has been given to the system of management of the six schools, which are currently of different management types within the Listenelli site? Uh, the Member will be aware that there are the Lisson Alley site is a shared education campus site, and what we have been doing is working with the schools around uh, management structures, ownership, etc., etc., through the, and we're continuing to work our way through that process. Um, and I think it'll be complicated, but it, it'll be, it's certainly achievable to ensure that we put in place a structure which all the schools on that site are comfortable with. I call Ross Hussey for supplementary. The Minister has actually touched on my supplementary. Uh, he's made reference to the ownership of the buildings. So, will ownership of the buildings being provided by the state remain with the state? Or, alternatively, will the sale of the sites be used to subsidise uh, the building works? Um, but they're connected with slightly separate questions. As I say, we're working our way through all those issues. In terms of uh, the sites that schools will be vacating, I will imagine that the normal process will fall into place in terms of uh, the department seeking or going through the process to ensure that any investment by the department which can be retrieved is retrieved and those revenues are then returned to DFP. Uh, but I don't think that doesn't exclude discussions, debate and conclusion around the management and ownership of the schools on the new site. And that is the end of questions to the Minister for Education.